All right, the Utah Jazz lose to the Golden State Warriors, but there were a lot of things to like. Let's talk about it. It's the Hoops Nerd Show. Guys, before we get into it, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Price Picks. They are matching up to $100 with promo code HoopsNerd. You go to pricepicks.com, you use promo code HoopsNerd, they will match up to $100. That's free money. You put down five, they give you five. You pick the under on a jazz player, you're going to win. <laughs> but, anyways, use promo code HoopsNerd. It's, it supports the channel, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. And you will too. So, go to pricepicks.com. If you haven't before, sign up for an account. Use promo code HoopsNerd. It supports the channel. You get free money. What's not to like? What is not to like? All right, let's talk about the Jazz. The Utah Jazz lose to the Golden State Warriors. And by the way, guys, if you haven't already, um, I'm doing these live streams on this channel. But if you want to actually watch the game, if you go to playback.com slash SLC Dunk, where I am either by myself watching it or with one of the writers from SLC Dunk, you can come in if you're one of the first 20 people and get free league pass for the game. So you can watch the game with us. It's fun. We talk about it. We had a lot of fun tonight. And I'll, I simulcast on here. So if you don't need that to watch, then you can watch, you know, watch it with me and, you know, be in the chat with me. But anyways, if you go to playback, I'll see the chat. That's something we're doing now and probably doing next season. So anyways. Go over there during the games. It's a lot of fun. And and follow, subscribe, whatever it is, to SLC Dunk. All right, so the Utah Jazz lose this one. Let's – um, not me, not that. This one. And let's just talk about it a little bit. There were a lot of things to like from the Jazz this game, especially at the end. You knew I was just screaming when Key was, like, making three threes in a row. I was like, it's happening. Lisa al Gaib. It's happening. So, anyways – but let's go through this. Obviously, the Warriors did not play Steph Curry. It did not matter for the Jazz. They are not a good road team. They're just not really a very good team in general right now. They have the worst record in the league. They have the longest record. Well, they don't have the worst record in the league. If only they did. But they have the worst losing streak, and they've been the worst team in the league since trade deadline. So the trajectory the Jazz are on is not a winning one. But it is going to make them better long term because hopefully they can get someone nice in this I'm hoping for Stephon Castle. I think the Jazz are too. And it would be nice to see them get him because he would be just a perfect addition to this team with what he brings. So, anyways, Clay goes off in that first quarter like crazy. There's no one that likes to play the, the Utah Jazz more than Clay Thompson. His three point percentage when he plays the Jazz, the Jazz just goes through the roof, um, including his, you know, all, everything. He just makes all the shots. Draymond Green was one for two from three because, of course, he was, but he didn't have to play too much. A lot of just defensive play from Draymond Green. And then overall, Chris Paul had a nice game. Look at that, 12 points, nine assists. He was just great. And this, you know, they got nice additions uh, or contributions from Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. Kaminga, look at that, nine for 11. The Jazz did not have an answer. He's a nice player. Moody played pretty well, though the defensively, at least. The three-point shot wasn't falling. All right, let's talk about the Jazz. Uh, it was the rookies and a lot of G League players for Utah, but that's okay. That's what the Jazz want to do, and it was nice to watch the Jazz rookies do well. Bryce Sensaba is putting together multiple good games. Tonight he goes four for seven from the field. That field goal, that mid-range game of his is nice. It feels automatic when he pulls up uh, in his spots. It's just going down. Nine points, three assists. He made some nice. That was another thing about this game. Yes, the Jazz lost. Yes, the Warriors had just an absolute blitzkrieg at the beginning of the game. But Sensaba was great in little moments where the passing, three assists, three rebounds. His defense was pretty good. Look, the Jazz lose this game, and Sensaba was a plus one. The Jazz lose this game, and Taylor Hendricks was a plus two. I think that's a really good sign. These two have actually been really impressive, and Keontae George was nice tonight. Overall, you got to be really happy if you're a Jazz fan from what we saw from the rookies. This is exactly what you want to see, especially after last game, which was an absolute dumpster fire. And, you know, Will Hardy benches the rookies. They come back and really showed some nice stuff tonight. So I'm really happy about it. 
Uh, Taylor Hendricks, three for six from three. Did you know in the four games before this game, Taylor Hendricks was shooting 61% from three. Tonight, he goes 50% from three. The Jazz have a shooter, a three-point shooter, and some of these were above the break threes. So really nice to see, not just the corner, above the break, man. So I am excited personally as a Jazz fan of what I'm seeing. Yes, the Jazz are losing, but if all you're worried about right now is wins and losses, I'm going to tell you right now, next season's going to be a weird season for you. I'm telling you. Because this Jazz team is going to lose a lot of games next year like they're losing now. And it's the right move, 100%. But what's really going to be fun to watch during this time and while, like in games like this and next season, is this growth with these rookies. Because the Jazz hit a home run in that draft. All three of these rookies they drafted are NBA players. And there's real upside to Hendricks and Keontae George. And honestly, Bryce Sensabaugh, to be honest. Yes, KG10, it is capture the flag next year. I, I shared some Twitter stuff. I mean, Bill Simmons is saying he's the best rookie since, I mean, American rookie. I mean, Wembenyama is the best prospect we've seen since LeBron. Um, but Cooper Flag is looking like the best pro American prospect since, uh, I guess, LeBron. Um Anthony Davis, maybe Zion Williamson, kind of that level of player. He's awesome. He is truly awesome. Go watch the championships for high school. He played against Cam Boozer in one of those games. I think it might've been the championship. How crazy is that? You know, he's going up against DeBonsa. Uh, he's going up against Cam Boozer. They get the wins and in against the Boozer twins. I can't remember if that was the championship or if that was the, the final four for the high school. I didn't get to watch it live, but I watched the replays, but anyways, Cooper Flag scores 30 against, like, the Boozer Twins. He absolutely just wanted to show, like, I am that guy. And he is absolutely that dude. Uh, like, six blocks in that game, 30 points. It's bonkers what he is. I mean, you look at what the Jazz struggle with right now. It's defense. You know what would be really nice? An absolute game-changing defensive player that blocks everything, steals everything, clogs every lane, Plays on the wing. The Jazz have never had a superstar wing. They would just never have. I guess um, Andre Kirilenko. And that's it. <clears throat> and so you get that guy. That All of a sudden, you've got a game changer. And then if you're just continuing to play those rookies, you are going to... I mean, I can't imagine how many Utah Jazz fans are going to be sent. How many kids... Are, if the Jazz draft Cooper Flag, how many babies born will be named Cooper and, and Flag? I'm telling you right now, if they win that pick, that's like a top five Utah sports moment. You know, you got like the Jazz going to the finals two years. Those two are probably top five moments. Uh, once upon a time, BYU won like a college national title in like 1984. And then and then like it's what else is it? It's I mean, I guess Darren Williams and them go to the Western Conference finals. Utah beats uh alabama in a bowl game that the alabama didn't care too much about you know that's like it what else is there you draft cooper flag that's like a top five moment because then all of a sudden you've got that guy so let's get that moment let's get that guy this magic moment i want to feel it okay but anyways you know what's really nice is that the jazz already have three rook rookies that they can put around that guy when they get him and then they can build and grow together <laughs> Cafe Rio will start saying selling flagitos. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, it's going to be a momentous occasion for all jazz fans. If you are not excited about something like that, I don't know what to, I don't know what you get excited about. You know what I'm excited about? Taylor Hendricks shooting 61% from 3 in 4 games and also being a defensive monster at times. But there needs to be more defensive players on the Jazz. That's one thing that the Jazz struggle with right now. Defensive talent it's just 100%. But you need defensive talent that can also play offense. You know, the Jazz need two-way players. And Cooper Flag is obviously that. But you know who is also that? Taylor Hendricks, 100%. That guy can shoot the ball. He can switch and play a lot of positions on defense. And I'm excited about it. Now, the draft is coming up. And I want Stephon Castle in a terrible way. In a terrible way. 
He might be Drew Holiday, guys. He might be. And that, that would be just incredible to have someone like that next to Keontae George. By the way, Keontae George, we haven't talked about Keontae, had some nice defensive moments tonight. Really nice. Key, Castle, Hendricks, Flag, are you serious? And plus, what if we hit on one of these other picks? The Jazz have two other picks this draft, you know? And who knows? Maybe they make a trade. I tell you what. I tell you what, and I put a video up, and I hope you all go watch it. I put, it's called The Jazz Need to Trade Lowry Markkinen, and please go watch it. Please go thumbs up it. Go share it on your social channels, because I put a ton of work into that, and money, to be what, quite honest. Shout out to Pixel Neighbor and the designs that he did. I, They're amazing, and I'm going to do more videos like that. Let me know in the comments what you think about that video, by the way. But anyways... This Jazz team has to be bottom three. In fact, let's talk about this right now. This Jazz team, even with Lowry Markkinen coming back, they will win some games for sure. But I tell you what, you know who they're not going to be better than? Memphis. They're not going to be better than Memphis. Memphis gets John Morant, and they're probably getting Donovan Klingon in this draft. That's what's crazy. Um, I was talking to that guy from the Grizzlies blog for SB Nation. He was asking me about Walker Kessler and what it would take for the Jazz to send him. And I said, you know what? And this was earlier in the year. I was like, you know what? If the if the Grizzlies offer the Jazz the seven and the Jazz can offer them like their late first in this draft, I the Jazz would probably do that real quick. Because, I mean, honestly, maybe you can just get another wing. Like, can you get Cody Williams and Stephon Castle out of this draft? Would that be crazy? That would be so great. I would be really excited about something like that. Uh, but now they've got a choice of, like, Donovan Klingon. Klingon might go top five. In fact, you know, one of these teams might take him. Washington might take Donovan Klingon. Wouldn't that be crazy? He's really good. Really good. A defensive anchor like that isn't, you know, we saw it last year with Walker Kessler, and then he just kind of fell off the face of the earth this season. Really disappointing. So, anyways, I think that's pretty good. Uh, Omer Yurtsevin is not a starting caliber center in the NBA. That's really pretty much all I took from this game. I mean, he had some moments, but he was minus six, four for seven. He's not a very good defender at all. Just not. So it's really hard to win when he's on the floor because defensively he's really bad. Uh, he does some nice things. He's a good offensive rebounder. He's got some nice touch on that little hook shot he does, but not great. Uh, Colin Sexton, I don't know what it was tonight. The floater was not falling. He played just 27 minutes. 15 points, 7 assists, though. The assists were nice. He had some moments. There were a lot of moments in this one, but defensively, the Jazz just didn't have it. Um, I will say, but Omer won't yurt you. <laughs> well, he kind of hurts you a little bit. He kind of <laughs> he yeeted a few uh, rebounds he should probably should have grabbed. But anyways, Colin Sexton, um, it's nice to see his assist rate. But really, the thing that's nice about Colin Sexton is the fact that he just goes hard every game. It does not matter. He is going to play hard. And I appreciate that, personally. That's something I really appreciate. That pun yurt me. <laughs> well done. Well done, DW. All right. Uh, let's talk about my man Keontae George. 34 minutes tonight. Made a statement tonight. I think that he is absolutely still that guy. Uh, he's had a real terrible slump. It's been like 10 games now where just shooting the three, it's just been rough. I personally blame myself because I made that tweet where I was like, I think this rookie season for Keontae is just as impressive as Donovan's. And then he promptly went on a sl shooting slump from three. So it's personally my fault. You can all blame me. Go ahead. It was my fault. But I can tell you what, and I know the three wasn't quite falling earlier in the game. He made three in a row in the fourth quarter and I was out of my seat. If you were on the playback, you would have been watching with me enjoying it. Go to playback.com slash SLC dunk. We can watch it live together. Um, lots of fun. But anyways, absolute awesome game from Keontae George tonight. And what he really showed was the two point shot, because if you take away <clears throat> the seven misses from three, then you look here. He was like eight for nine from twos. He was absolutely tearing it up inside doing a great job offensively getting to the basket and then you combine that i mean he only had one assist but some of these were misses uh but offensively he was really nice tonight and the ball was moving 
and a lot of like hockey assist type plays where he moves the ball to someone else they move it to the corner three knock it down you know in the end it doesn't really matter who gets the assist the only thing that matters is that you score right and if you're moving the ball within the offense that's going to happen but Keontae looked great tonight and it's why I think you know Colin Sexton I think is probably getting moved this offseason we'll see he was in trade rumors at trade deadline so that's what makes me wonder uh but you know lots of guys for the Jazz are always in trade rumors it's just a part of having Danny Age as your GM because he does his job but you put six foot six Stefan Castle next to Keontae in this lineup with his ball handling on offense, his willingness to move the ball, his defense on the other end, which is really nice, switchable. All of a sudden, you've got another piece that really works. And I there was a article that came out today. I can't remember. It was someone from No No Ceilings. They do the draft stuff, and I read the tweet. I forgot the guy's name. I apologize. But it was an article talking about how Stefan Castle, when he went to, to, to UConn, the reason they love him at UConn so much is that he does not care who scores, how they score. He does not care if he's getting points, rebounds, assists. He's just doing the things that he wants to win. And apparently his mom and dad just get on him that he works hard and plays the right way. That guy is a winner. Those are the types you guys – Tyler Rucker, that's exactly who it was, Dre. That's exactly who it was. You're right. Shout out to Tyler Rucker. He's awesome. Anyways, uh, that is the stuff you want on your team. You want guys that do not care. And I can tell you right now, that is the type of guy that Will Hardy wants on his team, someone that does not care. And I tell you what, I think the Wolves are going to be pretty darn good next year. I think it's going to be like pick 25 con – considering what we saw this year from the Wolves. And so I tell you what, if there's a team out there that says, like, you know, if the Jazz can get to, like, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if there's anyone that would take uh, the Utah Jazz Wolves pick next year and then Utah's eight for Utah to move up. Like, would San Antonio want to do that? Maybe, maybe not. Uh I don't know. Toronto wants to keep their pick, so I don't know. I think we may be really ha uh, unhappy if we don't. I'm going to be unhappy if we don't get stuff on Castle. It's going to make me sad, but it's just looking less and less likely. He's looking like such a nice prospect in this upcoming draft, but maybe there's a lot of people out there that are just like, oh, the three-point percentage isn't good, so not good player. I tell you what, his shot looks fine to me, and you put him in the gym and get that shot worked on it'll improve but you cannot teach a lot of the other things that he brings the defense the ball handling the passing the like just the, all the intangibles are so great off the charts just a winner that's why i want him i want him on a, in a jazz jersey and i want him in a jazz jersey for 15 years you know he does not care if he's making an all-star team you know what he cares about he cares about winning basketball games and Utah's not worried about winning too much basketball. They're not worried about winning basketball games right now. But when they are worried about it, he's going to be an awesome player to have on your team. Yeah, KG10. Other teams are going to storm the castle. Absolutely. I think it's a bummer. I I just think the Jazz were probably hoping that he'd suck. And he doesn't suck. He's very good at winning basketball games. Those guys win you basketball games. They do. The guys that rebound and get steals and defend and pass the ball, move the ball within the offense, find the open man, move it quickly. They He drives. He scores at – by the way, all this stuff about him not being a good shooter is stupid because he's a good shooter inside. His three-point shot is not there yet, but he's a good free throw shooter. He's a good enough free throw shooter, and he's got a high percentage on his twos. Like, he knocks down his mid-range. He gets to the basket. He puts him in. And you know why else he has a nice two-point percentage? Because he offensive rebounds and puts the ball back in and wins you basketball games. So, uh, I'm really hoping he drops. I really, really hope he drops. It would be just, I would be so excited. And watch, he's going to go to someone else, and he's going to be Drew Holiday, and I'm going to be sad. Uh. Anyways, let's get back to this. Uh, Kyra Lewis had a few moments tonight. I mean, I don't know if he's an NBA player. He was picked 13th overall in 2020. Did you guys know that? He was a late lottery pick, 13. Um, 
he's really fast. He had that one play. Johnny Juzang threw the ball up the court, and I just thought it was a turnover. Somehow, Kyra Lewis both got it and scored uh, on that play, and it was kind of like, holy smokes, the guy is fast. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know if really he's much of anything, but it's interesting. I don't know. Maybe he'll earn his way to some more minutes. I'm not quite sure because I just feel like guys like Kira Lewis or Kyra Lewis is how you say it can be found. Um, there's just so many guards in the league. You've got to be really special in certain ways to really stand out. Uh, Baisley's pretty nice, guys. I like Darius Baisley. Um, he's got some more time to develop. And guess what? The Jazz have an opportunity to develop some of these guys. He might be something. Uh, he didn't take any threes in this one, but he knocked down two of his three shots he took. He plays defense. He's an athlete, and he does a lot of nice things on the floor. So, I don't know. A lot to like there. Uh, Micah Potter, as always, I'm a fan of Micah Potter because of his willingness to do whatever you want. Um, I don't know if he's really a long-term option, but you know what? It's nice to have guys like that on your team that are willing to do what it takes to help your team win. And I... He didn't make any of his threes tonight and wasn't all that impactful, but that's okay. The Jazz aren't worried about winning. And I tell you what, Micah Potter's probably willing to go to Summer League next year, and that's awesome. That just shows, like, character from him. So I think he's great uh, in that respect. All right, can we talk about Johnny Juzang? Holy smokes, did he have his best NBA game tonight. If you weren't watching, it was fun. Seven for eight from three. He could not miss. Well, he missed once, so not literally, but he was great. And you know what? His defense is like pretty, I would say, and I mean this as a compliment, compliment, is average because he stays in front of his guy pretty well. Now, he's not someone that blocks shots or really gets people off their spots and things, which is what you want from a good defender, someone that doesn't let them get to your spots. I'm looking at you, Stephon Castle. I see it. I see you. As they say in Avatar, I see you. Stefan Castle, I see you. But Johnny Juzang stays in front of his man pretty well. Not against everyone. I mean, not a lot of people can stay in front of guys like Anthony Edwards and, and, uh, and what's his name? Green. What's his first name? I forgot his name. He's the, the guard from Houston. You know, there's guys like that that no one's staying in front of. But for the most part, Juzang does a pretty good job staying in front of his man. And when you shoot lights out like this, I think Johnny Juzang is earning himself a contract, to be honest. From all the things we've seen from every player post-trade deadline, one of the most impressive has been Johnny Juzang. His three-point shooting is, I mean, after tonight, let's just see what he did to his three-point percentage. You look at it tonight, uh, let's pull it up. And this is, by the way, only his second season. The Jazz got him as a rookie. I can't remember if they drafted him or if he was an undrafted that they picked up. Um, but let's see. He's at 39% from three for the Jazz, second season. It's pretty good. And it looks it looks very sustainable. So, you know, I you know, we all, we like to talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder rebuild, which is, by the way, one of those you should watch. The other one is like the Houston Rockets rebuild, where they've got like two top three picks, and they're starting to work out. And all of a sudden, surprise, surprise, the, the Houston Rockets are winning more basketball games. I know they got eliminated tonight, but guess what? You... You get those guys in the top three, you play them, let them develop, and then all of a sudden you start winning basketball games. Especially after you get them, that's when you make the trades. So I kind of like what the Rockets did. I didn't absolutely love who they signed, but that really is the model, is you get like you get two or three times in the draft where you try to get those top three picks. You really got to hope that you win the lottery and get that number one. But at worst, you're getting top three guys, which is what they've done. They did not win the lottery the last three years, which sucks for them. But they've got Amon Thompson now. They've got Jalen Green. Is it Jalen Green? I think it's Jalen Green. And they've got Jabari Smith. And now they've got a core. And then you build around that core. You go get your Fred Van Vliet. And you go get uh, Dylan Brooks and, th and those guys that you fill around them. They also still have Shengun. You know, so Utah is behind those guys. They have to get their top three picks and they have to get multiple of them. And then you make the trades and then you fill in the gaps. You know, you've got to go get the talent at the top and you hope that it's one of those star wings next year. And then you fill in the gaps after. But you're not making trades before. It's why the Lowry marketing question is so tough, because it would really suck <clears throat> 
to get like the seven to nine pick range again next year, especially seeing what's at the top and knowing that we could have. And I don't think Danny Ainge and Justin Zanuck want to do that, at least from based off of literally every move they've made has been looking like that's something they want to do. Aside from a few, a few interesting moves they've made, like getting John Collins, um, they tried to get Chris Stapps Porzingis. It didn't work out, and the Jazz have adjusted. And now they need to adjust and make the right move because the Jazz need top-tier talent. And the only way they're getting it, like we've said, is through the draft. And they control their picks. And by the way, I actually don't think Danny Ainge wants to give a pick to Oklahoma City for that trade. I think that's something they just don't want to do. Why would we give them a free pick, especially in 2026 when it's Cam Boozer, A.J. DeBonza, all those good players in that draft? Why would you want to give a pick to freaking Sam Presti? You can you can go up a river, Sam Presti, but you ain't going up that river with our pick. OK. Oh, my gosh. I can't tell you if you get oh, I I would die. I may die on this channel if the Jazz win that pick. Because we'll do the lottery live together. I really want to. I really want to enjoy it. We did it last year. It was fun. Uh, if we get it this year, oh my gosh. Oh, next year, I mean. Although this year, who knows? Maybe we win. Alexander Saar would be pretty nice on the Jazz. But I tell you what, I think the Jazz would pick Stefan Castle number one overall. I think they like him that much. That much. So anyways, uh, not a lot else to say. Lucas Samanich is not an NBA player. He went in and went 0 for 4. It's pretty bad. But I do think that Johnny Juzang is an NBA player. Now, we've got a few games left. There's four games left for the Jazz. All games they probably will lose. Nuggets, Rockets, Clippers, Warriors. I think we're going to see a Jason Preston triple-double in one of these games. That's my prediction. We didn't see him play tonight. We did not see Kenneth Lofton. But it would be fun to watch those guys play. Kenneth Lofton has a, has a contract with the Jazz. And we've gotten to see Darius Baisley a little bit. Um, I think we should play it. Let's see, Dre. I think we should play it safe this year and then draft for potential next year. Maybe. I just think they want Stephon Castle because I think he, he could be. I think he's one of those guys in this draft that you look five years from now and you're like, yeah, he was quite the guy. You know, I don't know if he's even an all-star, but he's certainly a winning player. You know, did Drew Holiday? I think Drew Holiday's had a few All Star games, so I think that's kind of like the comp. You know, Drew Holiday's not like a lights out shooter, but he's good enough. And when you consider the defense and the ball movement and things like that, is what makes him so nice. You know, I mean, Drew Holiday goes to the Celtics and they're just off the charts. <laughs> I mean, their offense is like one of the is like the twelfth all time best offense of all time right now. The Celtics are just absolutely blowing the doors off people every night and part of that is drew holiday so you want someone like that on your team now just don't be good enough that it makes the jazz win too many games is the only qu problem um i think that's everything tonight it was nice to see the jazz really just kind of play better than last game where they all got benched they just played better and it was nice to see they had moments on defense they had runs they got some stops uh they had, you know, each rookie looked good at certain moments. And so that's all you can really ask for right now. The Jazz are not going to win a game, and they shouldn't win a game. That's the right move because getting the eight pick is better than getting the nine. And in all honesty, Memphis might win a couple more, although they'll probably rest everyone too. So, But they're only two games back of Memphis. So not out of the question. Four games left. Very realistic. Utah can maybe tie them. Maybe. Memphis is four and six in their last 10. So it's a long shot. So uh, in fact, let's just see here. Let's go and see who's playing. Did Memphis play today? I don't believe so. I don't think they did. Um, so let's go look. What's tomorrow? Monday. No games tomorrow. Wow. That's weird. Uh, Jazz play the Nuggets. Who's Memphis playing? Memphis plays the Spurs. Very winnable for the Grizzlies. And do the Spurs want to lose? Yes, look at that. The Spurs would like to lose. So possible, possible ground to be gained there. And then Wednesday they play two games in a row. Dang it. So they're probably losing that. There's no way they play three in a row. 
Sorry, this is just live. And then they play the Lakers, but maybe the Lakers will rest. Okay. It's not out of the question. It's not out of the question. Let's see. Let's go to the more. Let's do the pick odds. You want to look at this, Dre? So right now, if Utah gets to this Memphis spot, uh, it ups things. Is that what you wanted to see? Um, remaining schedule strength. This is the interesting one. So Utah has the fifth toughest schedule to end. Feels like they've had just a tough schedule all year. Uh, where's Memphis? Memphis is 11. So they've just got the Spurs, but then they got Lakers, Cleveland, and Denver. Hopefully they tie the Jazz. That would be incredible. Oh, you're right, KG10, because of the championship. That's right. Uh, if you t if UConn wins, I get a free lunch at work. So go UConn. <laughs> Selfish. All right. So that's all I got tonight, guys. That was a fun one. If you're not watching the games, I mean, I guess I get it. But uh, actually, I don't because it's fun to watch the Jazz. What else am I going to do? In there, you've got four games left, and then we don't get to watch them till September. What a, like? Are you serious? Watch the games. They're fun. We'll get to see Summer League. That will be fun. But I like to watch the Jazz now. Right? All right, let's do our tankathon and see what would happen if the lottery was today. Let's see. All right, if the lottery was today, what happens? Washington wins. Memphis jumps to two. They get Donovan Klingon. Oh, my gosh. Toronto drops to seven. Their pick goes to San Antonio. Tears in Canada. And Utah stays at eight, keeps their pick, which gets us, according to this, Jacoby Walter. But I would probably rather take Cody Williams or Modest Buscellis. I got to watch some Buscellis tape. I haven't watched a lot. I'll have to watch some. All right, let's give a shout-out to our All-Stars. Let's give a shout-out to Ryan Perry, the legend, Nathan Butnett, Burkhart, Fly Eagles, Fly Platinum Eagles, the, the Real Deal, Lars Jarvin, and Just Buckets, JB, Baby Elliot Madsen, Christian House Money to Haas, The Outlaw Jesse James Nelson, Asikali Raisibe, The Man from Down Under, See ya, Lex the Later, Built Ford Tough, Alexander Tufts, Jorge Arrizaga, Mi Amigo de Abajo, Jordan the Goat Best Roll, TGD Total Game Domination, Tyson Price, The Price is Right, Austin R. Grant, Editor Extraordinaire, KG10 to TH5. How about KG10 to SC7 or whatever he is? Patrick Kubel, The Connoisseur, and Robert Hall of Fame. Guys, like and subscribe to the channel. If UConn wins, I get to go to White Castle. There you go. Guys, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. Go to playback.com slash slcdunk. Or go to playback.com and search SLC Dunk. Subscribe. It's a lot of fun. We can watch the game together the day after tomorrow. But I will be here afterwards, like always. Guys, I will talk to you next time.